because in the next talk we're going to talk about what's new in textiles. So we had with Ulrika talking earlier today, she was talking about polymers and she was talking about how we can extend and how we can change that. And now we're going to have uh, Nils Christoph Pearson, who's going to come from the, the Swedish School of Textile and he's going to talk about what is the future in textiles. So please welcome him. Right, uh, <clears throat> let's see how things, the technology works here. Isn't this a tremendous conference? We are talking about uh, fashion trends, we heard about graphene, we heard about algae production, everything mixed in a wonderful, my compliments to all organizers here, wonderful, uh, wonderful piece of work. Yes, it works. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to, to say a few words about textiles. I'm com coming from the Swedish School of Textiles and uh, going to tell you a, bit, uh, a few things about textiles. Uh, I was, um, uh, my, my idea here that this conference was about material science with all the facilities that are, that are now built here in, in Lund. Um, I have a background in physics myself from, from Lund and mathematics also. Uh, and, and then mixing material science with humanities and, and um, innovations and, and uh, entrepreneurship. Um, and this was also called uh, a master class. So I, I was thinking of being a bit of a pedagogical here, trying to be that and, and uh, uh, say a few things about, about textiles. Of course, textile is a material we all, we all know everything, nothing, we all know something about textiles, uh, of course, but still I meet, when I entered into this area, I meet a lot of um, um, misconceptions and, and uh, not really that awareness of, of the opportunities that are in textiles and the uh, problems also. So I first want to argue and prove, <laughs> prove we are in the academic well, here, uh, uh, trying to prove, or uh, uh, just mention a few arguments, that textile is a very special class of the materials uh, compared to, sorry to say, those of you that are into, the, into these areas, but different, uh, different compared to uh, papers, uh, ceramics, steel, uh, uh, different kind of areas. I will give you three, um, three kind of statements on that. And if, if, this, is the, if, it, if, if this is the case, I'm happy to, to discuss that afterwards with you. But if, the, if this is the case, um, then there is also a key using textiles for addressing future uh, international and domestic uh, problems. Uh, textile is maybe a, maybe a key or two to things here, but it's also, we know, all know about that, textile uh, provides a lot of um, uh, problems and uh, challenges uh, to things here, to, to uh, sustainability. Okay, F for the first argument, imagine that we had no uh, textiles then the fashion of the summer of 2016 should look like something like this. This is not made of, of textile, it's, um, it's a metal-based clothing, not that um, high comfort, I would say, this wonderful day. Uh, and it is a wonderful piece of material, this. Oops, whatever. Um, we have something very special here with the textile. We have 100% market coverage with textiles. All human beings, whatever culture, what, whenever, whenever, at least in, in, in terms of, of uh, culture, have used textiles. There has been no culture whatsoever that has not used uh, textile. And if we can uh, make, it, make a small calculation here, maybe, Maybe when we are in the shower, 
taking a shower, let's say that we are taking a shower for 20 minutes each day, I don't know. And if we calculate that, then we take the towel, that's a textile, we, do in, we, we, we um, um, interact with the, with the towel, and then we go to bed with bed linen and, 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 and sheets and so on, and then we also interact with textiles. But uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> 1.39% of our life, we are not interacting with big textile. All right, so why is that? Well, it is because textile, <coughs> okay. <laughs> textile um, offers a, a number of uh, opportunities, a number of characteristics, a number of, uh, of um, properties that uh, is rather unique, the, the, the thing here. Uh, I have to admit, let's see here, uh, I have to admit here, let's see here, maybe that, yes. I have to admit that, uh, uh, that um, uh, hearing about uh, graphene and then saying that this is a two-dimensional uh, system, well, well, but at least to, for human eyes and human everyday um, uh, experience, textile is uh, a two-dimensional surface and we could produce that with with cheapness and precision and repeatability. We have it all over, everywhere. Um, it's a way of producing lightweight materials. You, we could produce, uh, it's a way of connecting two points, something here and something there. We have a connection, a continu uh, continuity. Uh, we could cover small and large objects, going from um, uh, medical uh, applications, implants, textile implants, to geotextiles in, in agriculture, covering huge, huge, huge uh, areas. Uh, textile could be uh, used as interfaces for different, between different kind of um, systems. And it has the rather unique property of drapeability. Uh, I, have, I have to give my uh, compliments to the previous uh, speaker for a wonderful um, outfit. Uh, that, that is great ability. Um, um, well, pliability and flexible textiles are, 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 are soft in a way. And by textile, uh, that is ropes, wires, we could handle one dimensional um, mechanical load. You see it in bridges, in shoelaces, in ropes. When we maybe go out sailing in the midsummer eve here, or midsummer, midsummer holiday, um, uh, yeah, porous. Uh, we could create a different kind of a porosity and density, and important things here, expressing aesthetics, um, things like that. Keeping moisture, moisture management is extremely important for clothes. We should not be that happy if we should have uh, ordinary plastic sheets. On ourselves uh, this day, this this day, keeping um, handling sweat and uh, keeping rain out, and it's highly, highly symbolic and uh, uh, cultural, culturally uh, accepted uh, material. It could be made recyclable. It could be made degradable. That is not always the case. Yes, you see these properties, you, should, you, 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 you might say that, well, we have seen this before, this, this was not that, not that um, strange and difficult to understand and see that. Still, uh, when we are talking about smart textiles, that is merging different kind of technologies into textiles for sensorics and things like that, in the classic sense, these properties are most often forgotten, I would say, most often forgotten. People are not using the fact that they are having textiles, which is kind of strange. Uh, I will give you a few examples of what, what this meant, or, uh, a few examples of, so to say, classical smart textiles, that is integration with sens sensors, but I will more um, discuss other, other, other topics today. Uh, but even if, they are, even if they are obvious, maybe, they are also uh, forgotten, that is, that is the message here. So, my first proposition here, textile, among all artificially made classes of materials, textile is the one closest to human beings. Okay, uh, if we divide the world into two areas, um, 
the technosphere with all the synthetic man-made things including buildings, electronics, chairs, furniture, clothes. Uh, it is populated by artifacts. Artifacts. Okay. Um, if we if we if we do this and uh, and divide, taking another domain, we call that the biosphere. Everything that is produced by biological processes, um, uh, plants, fungus, different kind of species, animals, all those kind of things. They are populated by biofacts. That is organisms or parts of organisms. So we have the biosphere and the the uh, the, the technosphere. There have been, of course, during the years. Um, during the years, this, this division or this polarity has been uh, obviously very important to human beings and to philosophers, uh, Cartesius, and so on. But. <clears throat> Uh, nowadays we see a, an expansion of this, this uh, domain um, here um, and um, it is maybe the case that there is no more or less unimpacted uh, areas on earth that, is, that, that are not impacted by, by a technosphere. Um, agriculture is everywhere, almost all, all the area in the world is, is Occupied by different kind of agriculture, um, cities, uh, airports, roads, whatever. Still, this would not exist without this. That is an uh, important thing. There are many relationships between these two areas, these two domains. For example, the area, the 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 um, the, the um, discipline of what I should say of of. Um, of um, uh, biomimicking is uh, something taking an uh, inspiration, uh, uh, insp be being inspired from this area and taking that, producing some kind of artifact here. Also, um, this concept of ecosystem uh, services, ecosystem services, is more or less something that is uh, created in order to uh, to to to. Um, to uh, save things here and transfer, um, transfer, transfer some kind of service into the technosphere, uh, supporting uh, pollination by, from, 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 by insects, um, uh, recreation area, and so on. Yeah. So we have these two areas. So, so Sorry to say, sorry, sorry to show you this, but it's a long list and it's part of a large argument. But if we if we take a look at this rather briefly uh, together, we will not dig into this. My argument here is that we have the technosphere. It is characterized by a number of, by a, a number of things here. But we have the biosphere and the biological processes producing a number of uh, characteristics. Here they are, here they are, number of characteristics. And what is the, how is, how is the technosphere addressing these things? Sometimes they are similar. We have composites, for example, both in the, in the area of bio, bio, um, biofacts are made both by, comp both biofacts and artifacts are, are, could be composites, for example, these are the same. Uh, some, are, some are different, water-based chemistry is common here, uh, driven by, um, by enzymatic reactions and protein fo folding and so on, but more or less always water-based chemistry, but here we use uh, more or less solvent-based chemistry, for example. So there are, there, are, there are things common, things that are different. And now my point here is to uh, check where is the textile? Um, where, where does the textile come in here? Textile is of course a part of the technosphere. Artificial things here made. So I would, I would could check a number 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 of points here where we have where the textile community or the textile um, where textile artifacts are rather common to 
what is happening or what has been happening or, or, or the characteristics of the biofacts. For example, for example, um, uh, textiles are more or less always um, based on, on polymers. Polymers are, of course, important in the in, in the in the biosphere. And it's a typical hierarchical material going for fibers, uh, going from polymers uh, into fibrils, into yarns, into fabrics. Uh, so it's a typical hierarchical material textiles. Uh, we are producing them as self-assembly, putting ti tiny, tiny, tiny um, uh, fibers and yarns together, and by this creating a, a, a larger uh, structure, namely a fabric. So uh, textile has been um, this uh, uh, um, additive uh, manufacturing has been always around in, in, in textile. It's not nothing new there. Bottom-up perspective, we are using textile and nature is using rounded surfaces, flexibility, so on and so forth. Yeah, I will happy to discuss that into details, but don't put out the time for this. So, my argument here, or my, 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 my conclusion, is that textiles is also, among the, the man-made classes of materials, closest uh, to nature. Further on, what are we using? What are the characteristics of textiles? Well, they are expressing our status, our status in the society, our, our health status, uh, our attractiveness. They are um, giving us an identity, who we are. Uh, we are expressing our identity, who we are. We are expressing how, if we belong to a group or not to belong to a group. Uh, I express my very, very fundamental driving force and need for being seen. An extremely uh, fundamental need for human beings. I could identify people by their clothing wrongly or, or less, but that, that, that is what I'm doing. Inclusion and exclusion, as I said, we're expressing aesthetics, our culture is encoded in textiles, um, the zeitgeist, the time, the, time, uh, the time spirit is included there. Both are biological and, and, and um, societal sex, sexuality, a very fundamental force for human beings. It is expressed in, in, um, in clothing uh, very much. Age, we are dressed in a certain age, or one could, uh, we heard that from the previous speaker, one should or should not follow a certain um, um, clothes code. We express power, our occupation, and, and endless things that are related to emotional things and uh, 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 related to uh, mental states. So, among material classes, textile has a very unique property once more, being closest to emotions and, um, uh, and mental states. So, what will this lead, lead us? Well, I will give you some examples of what we are doing in, in, uh, in the Swiss School of Textiles. Uh, we have this. Uh, vision and I think a very, very uh, far-fetching uh, vision here, but still uh, I think we are at least try to do, do something uh, along, this, uh, on the, along these tracks. We are a collaboration between the uh, three School of Textiles in Borås, as I said, here in western part of Sweden, and a collaboration between institutes, CBD AVF and SP, that is now changing name to, to RISE, which is uh, merging the institutes in Sweden. And we have all the opportunities to do things here, which I think is kind of interesting for innovation, uh, which is part of this conference also, that we really could do things here uh, and not just, not just talk about things. So in principle, in the building, you see the building there, uh, we could, we have a, more or less some kind of a small industrial plant uh, where we could produce null series and so on. And I would say that this, this, this talk is also an invitation that if you have some kind of a, um, idea or aspect that might be interesting from a textile po point of view, uh, you are more, welcome, more than welcome to, to discuss that with me later on. 
We are doing a very broad spectrum of things, but more or less today I will talk mostly about the, the middle part here. Um, the bridge here, this conference, um, uh, have four different kinds of uh, themes. Uh, and in the beginning, when I I was thinking on this conference. Uh, well, uh, I was happy. Well, the textile could address everything here. We could do everything. So, so of course, we are in the in the last section here. And uh, but I would say uh, words on, on some, something on, on the other ones also. Um, so, what 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 what's what's the good bit with textiles and, and the theme of clean, accessible water? Well, one example that we have developed is a um, kind of reactor. If you want to clean water, clean water, there are more or less two kinds of reactors. I'm not really talking about filters here. Filters is, is a good thing also, but reactors. If you have some kind of contaminated water, could be microorganisms, could be heavy metals, could be uh, organic uh, substances, um, you could pour in some kind of active substance here that reacts with this uh, whatever nasty material in a way. Then this is called a slur reactor. And this is good because you get a lot of effective area. So the central point here is to have as much as um, reactive area as possible. So maybe it reacts with the contamination in the water. But the, the, uh, the problem here is that, well, maybe the, 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 the uh, reminiscence here or, or the, the, the products here of, of the, the reactions, chemical or physical reactions here, uh, I mean, it's, it's a good idea to filter that out. So I need another production step. Yeah, I could make a pure, wonderful purified water, but I need something that takes away uh, whatever I, I uh, poured in. So the other one is to just having water um, floating uh, on a surface that is reactive in a way. Here we, uh, I illustrate this with, with uh, a photocatalytic material that is driven by solar light, especially the, the ultraviolet part of that. And here, if there is water rinsing on this uh, surface, uh, I get a number of reactions that could be used for in this case, uh, if I have a photocatalyst destroying the microorganisms, the, the, um, the cell membranes in the, in, the, in the organisms. And after here, I get some kind of a more purified water. These are called slur reactors and fixed bed reactors. The thing here that, well, this works pretty good, but the thing here is that, well, the effective area is what it is, so to say, it's, it's not higher than the, 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 the surface exposed to the UV light here. But here we have a larger surface area. My point here, we need something in between where we have the reactive species immobilized on the surface. Mm, one of the properties of, of, the, of the textile was that it was porous, it has a large fluffiness. So maybe we could create um, um, fluffy reactor, some kind of an in-between here, using the characteristics of, of textiles. And that's what we have done. We have merged our efforts uh, and uh, went to the, to the life science area, so to say, uh, where we integrated a certain species of, of fungus. Looks like that. You see it's hairy, so to say, textile-like in a way. But um, these fungus, uh, fungi are known to be very good for for bioabsorption that is taking up, in this case, heavy metal ions. So we have uh, created a procedure for putting this on a fabric. Might be able to see the fabric over here. And then these, all these fluffy uh, fungus. Uh, this is an edible fungus from, from the Indonesian kitchen uh, where where, um, and, and then this should be put into water. This could be put into water and uh, the water should go through here. And by that this has a very high effective area, 
and it's a good bioabsorbent, then you could take up uh, the, um, the, the heavy metal content of the of water. And that is one thing, but the good thing with the textile is that, hey, when it's finished, I'm, I've gone to this polluted site, and it's finished, when this is, uh, yeah, when it's finished, I could just fold it up, because it's a textile, and, and take it away, so it's portable. Uh, which is which is good. Many of these solutions for water purification and the remediation and so on, well, they are on the site. You're still having the pollution there on the site, but we are taking that away. Okay, and you see this uh, this diagram that just after a number of minutes we could come down to to 95 percent of, of solutions, and we are focusing on on on, um, on grey water solutions. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm uh, happy to go. I will not go into details, I could do that, but uh, just mentioning something that we could address the water problem also. Uh, here I still hope that there should be uh, another picture. Another theme here is ensuring healthy lives on, on, on the bridge, bridge theme here. And here we have uh, a dress. You see, it looks uh, rather technical this one but in principle you don't really see the 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 the, uh, the, the interesting things here but because underneath here and exposed to the skin there are a number of electrodes um, where uh, uh, um, that should um, manipulate the muscles here and this is this is a this is a suit for treating patients uh, suff suffering from spasticity, spasticity, and muscles are electr uh, electronically or electrical driven. Uh, so I could manipulate the, the tension there or the over tension in, in the muscles uh, by electricity. So therefore, have, we have incorporated a number of electrodes inside here, and we could make. Um, not uh, a small textiles product that is monitoring anything well, or censoring anything, but the next generation treating and treating the patient. So this is uh, an, an example of, of, a, of, a, of a thing that is uh, now on the market already. So we, we have developed that, and well, we see that we could we could uh, addressing this uh, theme also. But based on the fact that textile is a class of materials closer to human beings, you wear, always wear something. Why don't incorporate something that could make good for you, if I put that in a bit naive way? Okay, it comes back, right. Uh, yes, just a few things on this theme also. Uh, it's my, one of my part of my own background here, working with the photovoltaics, but I will not say that much uh, on this, but um, energy harvesting is a theme these days, and there are many uh, low entropy energy sources around um, that could be used, and uh, no one for 60 or maybe 70 years ago could imagine that you could use solar light for Driving, uh, uh, doing something uh, energetically interesting out of that. We have incorporated solar cells into weave, and uh, that is not that interesting. But uh, maybe this one instead. This is a uh, this is a thread, as you see it. A bunch of yarns here, but it's not normal yarns. They are piezoelectrical. I think we are, uh, yeah, one of the leading partners in the world doing this piezoelectrical fibers that could be knit, that could be weaved, really incorporated, it's just like a normal uh, black thread here. But when I stretch them or compress them, uh, I'm creating uh, electrical uh, voltage, electrical current also, but, but electrical voltage. And the thing is that, that, um, that the uh, electrical power is rather small here. Uh, why are we creating them? This is a magnification of what, what they look like. Uh, but still, coming with, 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 with the, with the um, coming um, area of, of um, coming era of, of a low consumption electronics, this could be interesting. So we have integrated the piezoelectrical fiber in a sock here, 
uh, which is kind of interesting. The sock, the foot is interesting here. You can't see it, it's just the thing here. And then we have a uh, we have a control unit there, but that's, that's not important. The important is that it is pliable, flexible material sock, which is terrible from an electronic point of view. You could still use that for uh, having a platform for integrating this piezoelectric fiber. Okay, now the theme is still raw materials and what's up in the textile community then. I think there are at least four themes that are around people are talking when people are talking to each other. I would say it's an extremely intense uh, topic. You could go talk to any if you are not into the textile community. You should be aware of that all, I would say all, 100% of, of, of people are talking about hey, how should our company be more sustainable, how should we find new uh, raw material resources for our fibers and so on. And I could summarize these into, two, into four different kind of, of uh, main topics. I'm not saying that everyone is doing something, but I'm telling, saying that everyone is talking, everyone, everyone is talking about this. And we all know that there are extremely problems in the textile community, especially with the uh, topics like this, environmental issues. We saw terrible pictures before that uh, on, on waste in, or, and uh, colored rivers in China. We will see that in Africa now, because there's a movement of putting textile industry in Africa these days. And these are questions of, of how to handle the, the, the working force. Um, just a few things on this gap that I just um, summarized here. That is the gap between the, the, the demand we have during the years here. Maybe we are here, 2016. Uh, we see a uh, forecast uh, expansion of the world population that creates many more richer people uh, that uh, want to have clothes, for, of course, but also other kind of textiles, interior textiles, carpets, um, curtains, uh, filters, implants, uh, whatever textiles are used for. Uh, but uh, pre the, uh, the, it might be that the, the, the production, the support, the, um, yeah, the support of, 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 of textiles could maybe go up a bit, but, but something needs to be done here. So there is, a, there is an increasing gap with the demand and the, um, the, the supply of things here, uh, what we see. And this has led to the concept of peak cotton, Namely, that we see exa exactly as we see peak oil. Uh, we are running, oil, uh, running out of new oil resources when one is talking about the peak cotton. And there are no places anymore for, for having this cotton, harvesting this cotton. And it's, it's, uh, it's a fight, a battle that we should have uh, food production instead on these areas uh, for the um, increasing world population. And cotton uh, produces a lot of problems with fresh water. It's not consumption any water, of course. It is polluting the fresh water, of course, and um, the spread of uh, pesticides also. That is more or less the, the uh, summarizing of the peak uh, cotton issue problem. I will come back to this. I will come back to this. But that is what people are talking about. So, what are we doing in this? Well, we are following, a, in principle, two, um, two, layer, two, two tracks here. That is uh, new, finding new feedstock, really working with this. And um, we are introducing a concept of RE. re. We are launching a book next, 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 next week in, in Almedalen, uh, where we are written, writing about this RE. What is, what is RE? I will come back, back to this uh, when I, before I finish. Um, but th this is, a, this is a, some kind of umbrella term for things here. So, going to concrete examples here. Here we ha have um, identified, and we are working closely, intensely, and I maybe um, there, we have representatives to this, uh, on this conference talking more about our um, uh, opportunities, especially in a country like Sweden, with, with a large pulp industry. But that is a bit um, suffering that people are not reading newspapers anymore. 
could, could the pulp be used for something else? Yes, it can. One, one have identified the, the, uh, the peak cotton problem. Hey, we address this problem by doing um, wood cellulose-based fibers instead. So here we started by using finished, already finished papers and uh, creating these kind of uh, things. And the, uh, those that are into texture, you see that this is, uh, this is a knitted structure, which is kind of uh, maybe complicated because it's, it's uh, a lot of loops there compared to weaves that are more flat. But we, are, we, we created this, uh, this, uh, this dress here. And that is one thing, being able to take the fibers, producing the fibers, twist the fibers, so they can be, could be produced in, in, the, in the industrial scale. This is industrial scale production, or industrial scale, uh, industrial scale um, um, machinery, machinery. We, well, we have, we have done this machine, we, we have this dress. We are, we are not, we are not, no producer. But then there are a lot of other questions. Could what 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 is the what is the for this this fiber? What is the um, the the moisture management of this? How how does it work? How does this go along with the dyeing, coloring of things here? The tear and wear uh, issue here. That, that is it is it sustainable from a mechanical point of view? But you see, these are now we are not just talking about things here anymore. We are really going to to. Um, to concrete things here. There is all of this discussion. If now we are producing maybe 20, 12 kilos of, of we, are, we are buying maybe 12 kilos of, of, uh, of textiles every year in a, in a Western country like Sweden, not all of these are cotton, but maybe five kilos, and all, most of these 12 or five kilos are thrown away uh, during the year, somewhere, going somewhere, are we really having a, a peak cotton problem? Hmm, I, I think that could be discussed. There are enormous amount of materials somewhere, maybe going to countries like Africa, maybe burnt for sure, but still, uh, before they are burnt, they are, they are somewhere. They are contaminated, they are mixed with other yarns, they are mixed with other materials like zippers and so on, they are mixed with, with additives like, like um, dye stuff and so on, for sure. But still, the cotton is there. Could we do something to get something with that? So here we have what 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 we have called the yellow shirt, which has been rather uh, seen in media. Uh, it is it is a structure that is made. It is the world first structure made of chemically chemically recycled cotton. Uh, so why not taking a, a number of genes genes? Treated them with a method created by, by uh, KTH researchers and a company, uh, Renew Cell. Uh, recycling, ref finding the, 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 the cotton uh, cellulose based fibers again, and then taking the process of, of spinning this to a yarn, coloring it, um, uh, knitting it, um, making a, a garment out of this, and, and finally. Uh, this is, the, this is the final state here. It's, it's a very nice, very nice shirt, I think, yeah, aesthetically also. And then we have, um, by the way, you, when you sell is now building a, a factory for this using old textile things in uh, Kristinehamn in Sweden. And then we have the yellow, paint, the yellow one, but then we have the white one piece here, which is based on Swiss pulp. Uh, I got questions here during the days on what is doing, what is happening with the Swedish pulp industry, could we use uh, products from them? Yes, here is an example where we have uh, made uh, fibers out of Swedish pulp and uh, made, um, made uh, one piece, it's a product called uh, Texas Back to Textiles. And then finally, I will, I will stop there. Uh, we have another feedstock uh, that is uh, carbon dioxide. Everyone has heard about carbon dioxide, I think. Uh, the thing is that that is kind of interesting, but it's in the wrong place. It's in the air. It's connected to greenhouse gases and so on. Uh, what are we chasing here? Peak cotton, the gap. Well, we are chasing polymers. That is a, <laughs> that is a polymer. 
That is what is needed. Hmm, aren't there some kind of resemblances here? Yes, there are. So, um, <clears throat> could one use, could air, I'm exaggerating a bit here, but could air, that is carbon dioxide from, from industrial processes, could that be a new feedstock for, for, um, for um, the polymer production? And we are doing the, this together with dedicated institute in Stockholm, we are, where we are trying to make fibers out of these polymers and maybe creating something that is not climate neutral but climate positive materials. I think I run out of time here, and um, but I uh, welcome you to to discuss further on, on these issues. This was just a kind of an introduction for you that are not really into textiles, but hopefully you see some kind of opportunities, and then there are well some seconds left. There you are. Wow! Thank you. I'll use the last few seconds to say thanks a lot, Liz <laughs> Christa. There was like a crash course in textiles. I'm sure I'm not the only one appreciating that. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're heading to another very important program, uh, which is lunch. So I'm going to see you back here at one o'clock. Enjoy very much. <laughs>